One of the key elements of our philosophy on heroic leadership is the concept of mentorship in the role of the leader as mentor. We derive our concept of mentor from a classic paradigm. Consider the story of the Odyssey. Oftentimes, within the story, we tend to focus on the main character naturally, which is Odysseus. But there's also a secondary character in a story that's equally interesting and compelling, and that's of Odysseus' son, Telemachus. Telemachus is actually born after his father has already departed to fight in the Trojan War. Telemachus grows up under the influences of, of his mother, Penelope. And suddenly, one day, to Telemachus' complete surprise, his mother turns to him and says, go find your father. This stuns Telemachus because he doesn't know where his father is. He's never met him. And he doesn't even know how to begin this quest, this journey to go find his father. And then into his life comes what today we would call a wise sage or an experienced coach. And this person devotes himself to the preparation of Telemachus in his journey and his quest to go find his father. He teaches him prepares him, tutors him, coaches him, and establishes a confidence in Telemachus for him to begin his quest to go find his father. And through time, that sage came to be known as mentor. That is where we get the concept of mentorship. So in this sense, when we, when we consider this classic paradigm of mentorship, it conveys a very specific characteristic. It is a way of life. It's not simply an act. It involves a deep personal commitment, a personal ob obligation that the leader feels and exercises towards those that the leader and is involved with. Think of a braided cord, several strands bound together. That is the nature of the relationship that we're referring to in the sense that the leader feels intertwined, closely bound with the protege. Everything that the protege does, whether it's success or failure, good or bad, right, strength or weakness, is a reflection on the quality of the mentorship that's been provided. Another way to think of it is that the influence that we're talking about is not meant to be contained simply to a day or an hour. Consider the idea or the image of a stone being dropped into a body of water and the ripples expanding outwards. Mentorship done correctly, mentorship exercised as a way of living, as a way of leading, is the expanding ripples moving outwards. What we have to trust as mentors is though we know we may be directly impacting one person, we don't know where the influence ends because we don't know in turn and in time how that person we're directly mentoring will then mentor others. And in this sense, there's not necessarily a shore there's really just an expanding influence and in that not only the quality of mentorship but the concept of mentorship is passed from person to person and generation to generation. Here's why mentorship is vital. It not only creates the necessary obligation and expectation on us as leaders, it puts us, if you will, in the right frame of mind. But for those we lead, it prepares them for the opportunity, the leadership opportunities that are going to come. And for the organizations we lead, it creates the right atmosphere. It creates what I call true bonds of fraternity, deep bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood that are far better, far more excellent than what you would call just familial workplace relationships. When we think of mentorship, we must always remember the ultimate end state. If our end state is to develop nurture and guide those we lead so that they themselves can master leadership, can master life, then mentorship boils down to what I believe is a solemn obligation, and it is this, that the leader must gain mastery. And once the leader has gained and attained that mastery, the obligation is then to give it away, give it away freely. Consider it this way. When we gain mastery, that becomes power. We have two choices in that sense. We can either hoard it for ourselves, for our own aggrandizement, right, for our own pride and ego, or we can do the greater thing, we can do the more heroic thing, and we can give it away. In society today, 
We often see the former, unfortunately. People hoarding power for their own selves. Classically, we know that does not develop a legacy of excellence. What we must recommit to is the latter, is the obligation to give away our power, to give away our knowledge, with the understanding that that is the only way we will create an enduring legacy of excellence.